asking a, the city council is reviewing a plan to own a parcel or most end of the city on second avenue from single family to plan development they declared their intent to act as lead agency on june and sent notices to all involved and interested agencies back then uh, they are the lead agency because they have the most uh, power to enact that change basically the zoning board will most likely see this project for variances in the future and should have been included as an involved agency they were not notified they were i think the only one left off of that notification so i just want to put it uh, alert the zoning board to the fact uh i'll keep you informed as uh as the project progresses thank okay. you thank you very much mr striking <laughs> Okay, so perhaps now we should take the attendance, please. Uh, yes, uh, Jack McCann. Present. John Normile. Present. Mark Palazzi. Katie McLaren. Ah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Chair Conroy. <laughs> Here. Okay, so we have four members present. That is correct. And um, the first item of business is to adopt the meeting minutes from the March 2nd meeting. Do we have any, uh, do we have a motion to accept these minutes, please? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay, John makes the motion. Second. Jack McCann is second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, carried. Okay, our first case, PLZBA 2022-0032-317-8th Street, a use variance and area variance. Uh, this applicant, Danielle Dowdy, proposes to convert a two-family residential property into a three-family residential property. And perhaps um, for that property, we need a use variance. I just said that, an area variance. All right, is Danielle present? Okay, you wanna come up to the uh, podium, please introduce yourself, your address and what you wanna do. Hello, um, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm Danielle Dowdy, pleasure to meet you all. I'm here for a request to rezone a currently two unit property to a three unit. Um, I just recently, my address is 317 8th Street for New York. And um, the purpose for the request is because I recently purchased the property. It is in a dilapidated state. It looks like it should have three units in it. So I'd like to have active use of all of them for residential occupancy. Um, why do you think it looks like it should have three units in it? Um, well, looks kind of small to me. Yes, from the street view, it is. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's just two story. Right. And the house is the, so three sides on the back reflect like the third floor. And it's full size that you can have full size windows. And there's already, it looks like there was, it, it looks like it should have been that way from the start. And, and yeah, do you know that it was or was I, not? I just, I just took you don't know. in July of 2021. You say you purchased it in July of 2021? Okay. So and that, okay, some months ago. I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to do anything illegally. I'd like to have the full operating capacity of the property in this legal state. Mm -hmm. If you guys would, if you don't mind approving our request. I do have to say that I appreciate. Um, I think you have to turn your mic on. Oh, can you hear me? I, I appreciate um, that in your application before we had to ask, you provided all of your financials. Um, so, you know, we don't really have to question whether or not, um, you know, we don't have to question that because I feel like you provided a, a very good picture of what it would look like with two units versus three. So mm -hmm. I just, I really appreciate that. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm glad I can give you as much information as possible because I'm aware that, you know, that there are a number of places that operate in less than desirable fashion according to the city rules and regulations, I have no desire to start out that way. Mm -hmm. I'd like to start out clean slate and make everything legal. But it does change the operating, 
budget if I'm not able to operate with the unit and it would cause a, a, a deficit in my budget or my projected budget. So did you did you purchase this property from an owner or from the city or whatever? I purchased it as a city foreclosure. At a city foreclosure, okay. And at the time? At the time it was presented as a duplex. Okay, it was presented as a duplex and that's what you, uh, you bought it with the idea that you would make it a duplex. No, because when I went into the building, it has three units. Like the house next door, I met the neighbors. They have a third unit in the basement. There was somebody coming out of the door. Right. The I was under the impression there may have been some maybe miscommunication between the owner and the city. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to put the two together because I wasn't able to communicate with previous owner. Right. So maybe some things get mixed up. Maybe things are applied for. They're not actually completed. So upon further research, I discovered that the city actually does have it on record as a two unit. But then when I check with the national grid, they confirmed that they had a basement, a first floor, and a second floor use. Oh, okay. Well, that certainly makes a difference. Yeah, historically, if that's the way that the property's been used, and I'm looking at three units, it just made sense to me when national grid said that, that maybe the previous owner operated as a three unit without approval. Okay. I don't want to follow in those footsteps. Right. We're not clear the exact history of the property. We think um, internally we were having this discussion a few hours ago, and we think it's very possible that the previous owner, prior to the city foreclosing on the property, this is some time ago, may have illegally converted the basement into an apartment. Um, but I don't know if, Danielle, I don't know if you were able to enter the property before you purchased it. Yes, I was. The unfortunate part about the situation, it was, it was covered in garbage. So it was hard for me to move around on the right. first and second right. floor, much less get in because the garbage restricted me from going downstairs until I got it cleaned out after I purchased it. And the entry door was blocked off with a board. Right. So I couldn't access that lower unit until I actually took ownership. That's that's kind of the nature of uh, some of the city foreclosures. Is yeah. It's right. hard for prospective buyers to get in and fully assess the building. And right. so... Um, it seems like when Danielle was able to finally get into the building and and um, get a full picture of it, there's there's three kitchens, three three bathrooms, oh, okay. and that kind of stuff. All right. so. Okay. Do we have anybody here in favor of this proposal? Anybody here in action? Okay. Do we have any questions from the board for the applicant? Okay. Go ahead, John. The access to the basement unit, is that through the regular front door or is it? There's a side door. On the hills, oh, side As a matter of fact, when you go down the, if I'm facing the building, the left side of the, there's a stairwell, there's a door there. And on the back, there was a door, but it's dilapidated. So it has to be totally restructured. Okay. Okay, so if we have no further questions, does it make sense for us to do a use variance? Because if that doesn't pass, then there's no point in discussing the um, area variances. Does that make sense? That is correct. There should be a motion as to the use variance first. And then we'll move on to the area if it passes. I, correct. And yeah. then I did pass around to everybody. The right. Criteria, criteria for each of the motions. Which we are most appreciative of. Thank you. Okay, so if we have no questions on the use variance uh, do we do we need a sequel um yes we do um uh, madam chair i move my notes here um for zba 2022-0032 that the board finds this proposal to be an unlisted action with sufficient information available upon which to make a determination that the project is not expected to cause significant environmental impact do we have a second Okay, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, do we have a motion on the use variance? I'll make a motion. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, for PLZBA 2022-0032, um, this, I move to make a, a positive motion to approve uh, the use variance. Um, 
I think that the applicant um, sufficiently showed us that she cannot obtain a reasonable return with the allowed use of units. Um, I, in, in stark contrast, I think this is only going to um, add to the neighborhood. It's not gonna alter the essential character. Um, and uh, the hardship is not necessarily self-created because like we discussed, um, the applicant was not aware of the full, you know, scope of the building um, on purchase. Uh, so I make a positive motion to approve. Do we have a, a second? Jack McCann seconds. Okay, and on the motion, John Normile. I vote yes to approve. Jack McCann. Yes to approve. Kathy Conmurray, I vote yes to approve. And Katie McLaren. Yes to approve. Okay, so that being the case, you're halfway home. All right, now we need the area variance for the uh, density and the parking. So would you like to address those uh, in this, issues? In this um, particular circumstance, the parking may, may be challenging. Well, there's front street parking, but as far as creating additional parking it would be challenging because there's a very narrow side on each side of the building. Mm -hmm simply large enough for a walkway. I mean, if it were wider, I would have no problem putting in like a driveway, additional parking in the rear because the land allows enough space for it. Unfortunately, due to the size of the lot and the fact that the lots on both sides are owned by other people that I can't encumber upon, I, it's make, it would make it difficult for me to create a driveway and additional parking. For right. the property. So in this moment, it would just be the front curbside parking. Okay. But it does stretch from the building to the corner because it is a corner lot. There's nothing else there on the other side. Right, right. Um, do we have any questions in regard to the area variance for the applicant? No, and I, you know, <clears throat> looking at this, it's deceiving because mm -hmm. it tells us that you're seeking relief more than what you have, but in reality, it's going from two to three. Yeah, it's just correct. The, the density is based on just units getting, per acre. Right. We're talking about a lot that is that is less than a tenth of an acre in size. So right. The numbers get inflated. Right. So it, it on at first glance, it looks like a, a very substantial um, relief being sought. But in reality, it, I, I don't I don't believe that it is. OK, so we already know that there's no one here to speak in favor or opposition of this proposal. We've all had our questions answered. So can we have a motion? We've already done the CEQA. So we just need a motion on the uh, area variance. Two of them, right? Two of them for the density and the parking. One, one, one variance, though. Uh, it, it would, you, you can take one vote. The, that's the, what I meant. The one yeah. action would be for both. Areas. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, I would move that for PLZDA 2022-0032 um, that we approve the area variances. Um, one for the relief of the 29 units per acre for maximum density and the other for um, the parking variance for the relief of the three spaces. Um, again, I do not believe any undesirable change is going to be made to the neighborhood or, or any detriment to nearby properties. In fact, it's just the opposite. It's going to improve, uh, improve that part of the neighborhood greatly. Um, again, I think the applicant demonstrated that um, uh, she's not going to be able to um, See, she's not going to be able to get benefit um, by another feasible means, um, and I do not believe that the either one of the variances are substantial. Okay, we have a second on the, um, that motion, John Normile, and on the motion, Jack McCann. Yes. John Normile. I vote yes to Kathy Conroy, I vote yes to approve. Katie McLaren. Yes to approve. Okay, good luck. You're all set. So much. Okay. The next case is <clears throat> PLZBA 2022 0031 162 9th Street. 
use variance and area variances requested. The applicant, Mark Anuji, proposes to convert a two-family residential property into a three-family residential property. So applicant present? Yes, he is. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay. Um, so would you like to tell us what you want to do, please? Sure. My name is Mark Nwuji of uh, 55 Woodside Avenue down in New Jersey. I am a commuter to New York for work. Um, I am a, a buyer for the unit at 162 9th Street. Um, we are seeking a variance on this legal non-conforming three-unit dwelling on an R2 zone. Um, so this um, <clears throat> is currently listed for sale as a three-unit dwelling. Uh, the current owner um, finished the first two dwelling and received a certificate of occupancy on it and left the basement unfinished. So essentially, I am um, planning to purchase this unit to complete the basement for my own personal use so that I can stay there while going to work. And uh, uh, intent here is also to have the three unit dwelling reinstated. Um, all modifications we're going to be doing is going to be just to the interior and not to the exterior at all. Um, and there is ample parking space um, uh, in the street um, that, that, that basically um, we could pretty much use. Um, there's also like a concrete area in the back, which also could be so could serve as an overflow for parking if need be. Okay, so could you tell me please what you're gonna do to the basement? Um, I mean, like, is it a basement basement now, did you say, or was it all kind of apartment, but that's okay, because um, Aaron's gonna speak for you. <laughs> I will. Um... I, I just will mention that according to our records, code enforcement's records, this is as a three, three unit residence. Oh, this is a three unit. Correct. Okay, so all right. Should I answer that question? You get this use variance in order to solidify this non-conforming use. Right. Okay. All right. That answers the question. He saved the day for you. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So um, that was my question. I don't know if anybody else has any questions for this applicant. Not a question, just a comment that it's, I think it's great that you would actually be um, living there because we have too many absentee landlords. Thank you. That's true. Do we, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interject, but that's I just right. want to note that specifically there's, again, a request for a use variance and a request for an area variance. Uh -huh. And one of the factors for a use variance is that the applicant cannot obtain a reasonable term return with any allowed use, the law actually requires that it must be established and demonstrated by competent financial evidence. And I don't believe that there was any, so I think that the applicant does have to satisfy that requirement okay. before this board can move forward. Okay, Mark, did you get that? Uh, yes, I think, yes, I did. Uh, could, could we do the um, variance uh, with the contingency that he will present it? Or does he have to, we have to wait for him to bring it and come back? It has to be like, uh, you know, it's one thing to say, um, I have a financial hardship, but you, can't, but you got to prove it. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. So for a proper record, this, this ZBA would have to actually make a finding as to whether or not the, the applicant can or cannot obtain a reasonable return with any of the allowed uses. So if he wants something that's outside of the allowed uses, he has to right. be able to show why he can't obtain a reasonable return with a two-family house. And if there's no competent financial evidence before this board, this board either can't make that determination or would have to find in the negative as to that. And he has to meet each and every criteria. Or, but we, or we, he can come back. We could table it. But what, what do we do with the fact that, as Aaron said, it was a three-family? Well, it, it was a legal non-conforming use, but it's... It's a, Didn't you say that, Aaron? It, it was a, It is a existing non-conforming use. I wouldn't it's, say it's 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 a it's. I wouldn't say it's a legal non-conforming. It could use, be but it's, it's grandfathered in. Is that? But I mean, it was a three-family house. I mean, is what you said. If I'm not mistaken. I don't, Mark. I don't want to speak for you, but I think I think this is a requirement that his bank might have imposed on him for the lending. That is correct. What What was the requirement that you? That it be changed back. Uh, that it be changed back or that no? Be, that be the use variance and not continue this non-conforming use. They wanted to see, in order to give him the loan against the property, they wanted to see that it was right. But wasn't wasn't it? Didn't you say it was down as a three-family? 
Co correct. And some banks will take a letter from us saying it's an existing non-conforming use and they're fine with that. Other lending institutions have more stringent requirements um, and they know that a use variance actually be obtained for that non-conforming use. Okay, and we're not allowed to give you the use variance unless you can show us that financially you can't make a go of it with the two family. Okay. You know, you need the third family in or this, yeah, you know, the third unit in order to be able to um, afford the property. Well, John? Can we rely on the bank's opinion as the lender that the income from a third unit would be sufficient as uh, with competent financial evidence? If you have information from the bank, you can it's the board's assessment as to whether or not it's competent. So, so if Mark were to obtain a letter from his lender, prospective lender saying, um, we would not approve this loan for a two family, but we would for a three, would that be, would that be sufficient perhaps or no? It, it, it could be, I mean, I can't speak right. for the board as no, to what's But you can evidence, say that, it's, that it's, it's not unacceptable. Correct. Yeah. All right, you got that Mark? Maybe you got it in your hand. I'm, I'm basically I'm taking notes, so pretty much. <laughs> so the request here is that I need to get a letter from my lender that states that this is uh, that uh, essentially uh, um, uh, they need the, the variance to be able to approve the loan. Is that it? Or did I get something wrong? Yes. No, okay. you got it right. Okay. So that, all that being the case, can we just table it until next month? Is that okay with you, Mark? <laughs> Ooh, uh, yeah. um, uh, we have been waiting on this since I think uh, September, October, I want to say. We haven't really closed. This is March now. This is the last piece left <laughs> of this loan. So is it possible it's to... April, but it's April. <laughs> uh, well, I guess this is April and I'm sorry. <laughs> Hang on, we got a question over here that we're discussing it. Sure. No, I just, no. Okay. No. And it's right. unfortunate that you didn't know that that had to be provided at the time of application. But at this point, it's either we table it or it's a no. And clearly, you don't want to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to know at all. All right. Um, if there's no other alternative, definitely then we will table then and get the information and come back um, better than a no. Okay, good. Do we have a motion to table? Jack McCann? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. See you next month, hopefully, with your letter in hand. All righty. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Okay, our next case, PLZBA 2022-0035, 15 Northern Drive, uh, Beats Shopping Center Commercial um, is here for a use variance. The applicant, Sarah uh, Ceresta, is proposing to utilize the now vacant building for the sale of automobiles, requiring a use variance. Sarah, that would be you. Come up and introduce yourself, please. And Tell us what you want to do. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Stresta, but I would like to call my husband because uh, he sure. had a morning Dell, if that's okay with you guys. So I'm by me. So, can you just introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Sayed Mumtaz. I'm Sarah's husband, mm -hmm. and we are uh, we signed a contract on that property on 15 Northern Drive. And we are looking to put up a small dealership there uh, for retail uh, car sales. Okay. And you know the criteria that you, you know the criteria you have to meet for use variance, right? Yes. Okay. And um, do we have any any um, information on why you can't just go with any of the allowed uses in that district? Why you feel the need for the car dealership because i have experience in that profession me and my wife we that's what we know i mean we, uh, 
uh, that's what we like to do. Plus, uh, I mean, the space wide, the building structure is so tiny that all the allowed uses, I mean, I went through all the details and I did, did I couldn't find anything that we can put there. It, it, it's very small and it's very uh, appropriate because for car dealership, all you need is a very small office building. We are not gonna be making any physical changes or repairs or anything, no extension, nothing. Just we'll be using that small building as an office and have cars uh, around the building. So we, our expectation is not to expand or to be too big, to just you know run as a small neighborhood. Uh -huh. um, does anybody have any does anybody have any questions for the applicant anybody from the board before we go any further oh jack are you uh, planning on adding some type of garage or anything like that no. to repair the cars no thanks katie did you have a question yeah you say you already purchased the property no we are under contract okay with contingency to the on this on this okay so, okay. I, I have a couple of other comments. So okay, I, Aaron. I, this property has been vacant for, for quite Ever. a while. Yeah. Um, and the previous use was a, a fueling station. Mm -hmm. um, most of that, that infrastructure has been removed and, and remediated. But um, given the, uh, this, this lot is undersized for the zone it's in. E3 uh, commercial, um, I think the minimum lot size is a half acre or 25,000 square feet, something along those lines, which this is quite uh, And having a previous use as a uh, gas station would make excavation for a foundation or for a basement tricky um, with the potential for some yeah. soil remediation and things of that nature. So this use would make, this would make use of the existing structure and essentially not have to touch mm -hmm. most of that lot. It would just be uh, asphalt and for, okay. for the storage of the vehicles. Um, so my thought is that um, throughout the application, there are some comments about manage, you know, about your financial, um, you know, selling four cars a month, that kind of thing. But that is not by our standards um, competent financial evidence, which we would well, need was, for use this. Just to give an idea that you know. Yes, but we, in order to rule, in order to vote, we need to have for a use variance. We need to have competent financial information as to why um, you could not um, a, obtain a reasonable return with an allowed use. Okay, and so what? What? Should I provide that? What type of information you are looking for? Well, if you were to be able to provide the specs of what um, what kind of income it could generate now versus with the use that you're seeking versus what kind of income or what cost would be associated with an allowed use such as like Aaron just mentioned that putting in a structure with a basement, there would be a lot of remediation because it was used as a gas station previously. Mm -hmm. You need to show us why financially, the only thing you can do with this is use it as a car dealership in order for us to vote to approve the change of use. Yeah, my mention our financial setting that that is what we can afford or I, I no you're, you're you're really what you're you're looking for is almost a pro forma okay. of, of the various allowed uses on the on the property. Okay. So I mean I can go through a list of. Let's say it was like a hairstyling place or something. Exactly. That's probably allowed. Exactly. By the time you got through putting the uh, renovations into that piece of property to provide uh, or to make it into a hairstyling place that would be big enough to give you a uh, uh, an income from a hairstyling place, you'd be spending a gazillion dollars because you'd have to, you know, check down below the ground for the gas pumps and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it just would be outrageously expensive for you in order to do anything now. And as you said, what you want to do is just going to require that little building. 
that's already there. You don't have to do anything with it, but put in your desk and chair. You know what I mean? But you want to put in something else that is the nail salon, uh, Dollar Tree, whatever. You know, you can't put anything there. And as Aaron said, the property is really small besides. Right. But the problem is, it's, it's easy for me to say, oh, it, it would cost you a whole lot of money to make it into something that would go there. But you got to have that down in, in writing. You know, I mean, you got to figure it. You got to figure, well, by the time we got through building, the, you know, making the building bigger, blah, 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 it would cost us $62,000, say, above and beyond to for the renovations. Whereas if we get to keep it as it is now, it's not going to be a financial hardship for us. Is that an, a decent enough explanation? Okay. So you understand what I mean? Okay. There's really minimal expense. Uh, and, and, uh, and I know you're right. That would be incurred to, to put in this auto dealership, whereas to put in something that is allowed in the, in the um, zone would be outrageously expensive and you would never want to do that. You, nor would anybody else, <laughs> right. you know? Okay, I mean, our closing was in clean and good. You know, the, the, the sellers, they were not um, going more time. So, the, you know, is, is there a way that I can submit something <clears throat> prior to that date? Because 15th April was the date. It's either we get the uh, variance or if not, then deal is off. So that was the contingency, and oh. they, they they cannot go beyond fifteenth April. I tried my best to get more time, but they are not going to give us more time. They just want to move on. So if there is a well, I don't know why they really want to move on. Only because it's been vacant for a gazillion years. I should think, and, the, and that's not your fault. I'm just saying for their, they can be telling you that, but in the end, I'm sure they're not going to say go away because I got fourteen more people who want to buy this place because nobody wants it. Right. Would you know what I mean? Letter from this would with some kind of notice from the city saying that the meeting has been tabled mm -hmm. be enough to hold them off? I can try. I mean, I, I, bet, you would. I bet you it would. I, I can try if they, you know, accept that. I'm not sure. But the price right. was really good. It, it, the property was never put for sale. So they put it pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. And that's how, like, I jumped in and I was the one just took it for the price they were asking. So I, I, I have no idea, but I can try with the letter and I was hoping if like, there is a way that I can submit what you asked for prior to next meeting, if that how town works, I don't know. That I we know. can look at it ahead of time. I mean, that either way, we still have to meet. Okay. Sorry. Madam Chair. Yes, Jack. Did you have, did you say you had to the 15th? Yes. So our motion here tonight would be, uh, if we table the matter, you could bring it to the bank the fact that we tabled the matter and that may oh, it's not the bank it's though it's the, the realtor the seller okay so you're you're not going to go through the bank at all no okay. so we're okay right i mean without that the board really can't act so if he can get it to us and i'm sure you know one of our departments can work to get him a letter and hopefully that'll be sufficient for the seller to hold off and keep the offer open and the contract open until this board acts. Thank you, Councilor. Okay. okay. Does that sound good? So we have to table it, this one also? Okay. Again, I can't tell right. you what motion no. to make, but if the board- But that's, where table, we're, that's the point we're at. We're tabling until the next meeting. Right, and you have to meet all the criteria for the use variance, but the big, the big one is um, the financial part of it. So, you know, I'll, I'll make a motion to table. Okay, we have a motion to table. Do we have a second? John, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the next case PLZBA 2022 0029, 356 3rd Street. Urban neighborhood residential medium to high density and area variance is required. The applicant, James Kennedy, proposes to renovate this four family residential property by putting in a carriage house, I do presume. Oh, it's James. Oh, I saw your name on the Zoom thing on the TV there, right, Mr. Kennedy? Hey, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so it's currently a, a two family. I want to convert it to a four family. Um, not putting a carriage house in, 
um, changing, uh, adding sprinkler to the property, um, removing uh, the second means of internal egress, which is this internal staircase, um, and uh, making it um, two two bedroom units and two one bedroom units uh, with parking in the rear um, for three cars. Like, why do I think you're putting it in a carriage house? It doesn't. I don't know. I mean, the, a carriage house, the parking with EV charging is, is better for me than, than a carriage house and the cost oh, of. Forget it, forget it, forget it. I got, no, we got so many cases here. That was 37 First Street. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Right down from uh, Leahy's funeral home. I know just right where you are. Okay, I was there. Tell me again why you have to um, um, make this into a board family. I, um, I don't, I, you know, honestly, like there is there is no have to um it's i would like to to be clear this is not um um a necessity but i have found that uh there's way more demand for smaller units um and that the tenants in smaller units are more professional um and and have less turnover so that is what i would like to do like the word being like you know um so it's at your discretion um, um, as to if I can do that or not. Okay, so tell me how, how many are there now? How many units are there now? Tell me. Well, it, it's it's a partially renovated building that I bought, um, and uh, there are it's 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 not hab habitable. You can't live in there right now. So it, there are, there are two units, uh, first floor and second floor. Um, the basement is not a unit; it never will be a unit. It'll be purely mechanical. Um, so the the, the idea would be to to make it into you know uh, two, uh, two units on each floor it is big enough for that this is not like squishing people into the units will have washer dryers they'll have central air central heat etc etc um hardwood floors proper kitchens um said so there will be parking with ev charging out the back so it's just a matter of what supply and demand I'm finding I, I have one other building in Troy, and um, I'm finding that that um, smaller smaller units just are way more in demand. Okay. Do we have anybody uh, have any questions from the board before we go any further? Do we have anybody here to speak in favor of this proposal? Anybody to speak in opposition? Okay, so now it's up to us, I guess. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I went and looked at that and I thought, oh my God, four. This place is like small to begin with. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm saying no. <laughs> but well, I, mean, I, I, I tell you what, because I understand what I'm asking is, is relatively, pardon me, relatively unreasonable. So what, what I what I, I think it's unreasonable. I just thought, what, you know, I mean, when you look at something, just looking at it, I'm saying you want to cram two more apartments into this building that it's just small <laughs> compared to no. what well, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to walk on your side and say, you're right, but yeah, okay. also, also you're not right. So what I would be prepared yeah, to do yeah. is I suggest you table this and let me with a, with a not nod towards favoring it. And let me get our Which brings us up next month to maybe 13. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Um, I mean, if we have some, you don't have to prove the financial part of it. You only have to prove the, you only need to explain the area variance, which is, yes. a, which is much less of okay. a, a test than the use variance is. So it's not like uh, the people before you, because they want to go out of your, their group, yeah. you want to do is allowed in that zone. If in fact you can meet the restrictions on the, lot area etc now yes. on the, the lot area what's required is four thousand feet uh you have 3250 so what you're asking for is a relief of 750 square feet that's that's not a whole lot yeah completely speaking right the width is 60 feet on a property lot width and uh so you need 35. i don't know what does anybody else think am i just dragging on here or you think it's a lot? Not in, I do. Not in comparison. I, well, I mean, I'm just thinking in comparison to 4,000. 
May I ask the uh, like applicant a question? Surely, yes, I asked you if there's a question. Yes, by all means. Mr. Kennedy, were you before this board before regarding- I was, yes, what? sorry. Who, why? Regarding your carriage house? No, no, I was before the board. I was the guy, I knocked down the church engine on 2nd Avenue a year and a half ago. So I was before the board to allow you allow me to not to demolish that church. Rogue. So I say no, we weren't here. Huh? I was thinking of the one that we had where the carriage house was up at that time. We were debating whether or not we could continue with the carriage house. That was two years ago. Oh wow. Well, oh, no. I, no, I don't have no. I I was don't even I was here, as I said, okay. for the church on Second Avenue. Uh, you guys were, were great. I think I I did everything that was asked. Um, or Second Street, pardon me, Second Avenue. Yes, Second Street, sorry. Yeah, I don't think you were here. All right, well, in any event, um, I don't know. To me, I don't know. You think 750 square feet is a lot of feet? The required lot area is 4,000, and this one is 3,250. I mean, I don't know. Another way to think about it. The, the lot is 80% as large as it should be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's not 4,000 square feet, but it's 80% of that. 80%, yeah. That's better way to put it. Yeah. The, 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 the right. he's looking for is, is less than 50%. Of the, right. And that's right. How that's what, yeah. The, I mean, that's an easy way to. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and then the and then the lot width is, is a function of the number of units, just like, just like anything else, just like the lot area, just like right. density. Mm -hmm. um, um, as far as the parking spaces go, um, it's only one. you are actually creating spaces. Yeah, so I'm, I'm moving the, 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 the back fence in. So, I mean, this is a long play, but uh, you know, we're probably away away from needing EV charging, but I'm, I'm starting to put it in, in every property because of the strip, the, the upcoming stress on the grid. Um, so moving the parking spaces in, Take, taking that 20 foot off the property at the back makes makes sense to me in the in the long term. So um uh especially that that far from the that downtown Troy. You know, it's not it's not in the historic district, right? So uh, less walking. Right. Right. Okay, do we have any further discussion? I I, I don't know. Oh, the other thing I just want to say, and this is none of this, you know, on that street, you know, I, I can, I can, I can walk up and down it. And what you have is you have rentals, rentals of students, which is a very good market. And I encourage you, uh, but those are, you know, three bedrooms, put them in there and they'll trash the apartment. No one cares. They'll move out. More students will move in the next year. What I really want is long-term young professionals. And I'm finding from the building that I currently own on second street, which is the 242nd. Um, that it's demand is for smaller units and those tenants they they pay they work in the neighborhood um and their their goal is always the same to buy which is great so yeah that's a good point um so right go ahead uh, madam chair i would move that for uh zba 2022-0029 that the board find this proposal to be an unlisted action with sufficient information available upon which to make a determination that the project is not expected to cause significant environmental impact. Do we have a second? Sorry. Okay, all um, in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Do we have a motion on the um, application? Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. Can we do all four with one vote? Okay, okay. I'm going to make a motion on the, uh, the four area variances. That uh, <coughs> I'm going to make a motion uh, in the affirmative to approve them. And this is based on a balancing of the, of the factors. <coughs> Certainly, in regards to an undesirable change, it sounds like the property owner is taking a long-term view in that he's uh, 
He's including parking <coughs> into his plan into an area that is kind of stressed with parking. He seems to also take the long term view of uh, the type of tenants he can attract to the neighborhood by having a, a larger number of smaller units. The uh, uh, this is also balancing that the the, uh, the request variance is not substantial, and my opinion, taking everything on balance that I've heard, everything that was submitted in the application, that it will not have an adverse effect on the neighborhood. So, with all this in mind, I'm going to make a motion to approve. And do we have a second? Jack McCann seconds and on the motion. Katie McLaren? Yes, to approve. Jack McCann? Yes, to approve. Kathy Conroy? Yes, to approve. John Romile? Yes, to approve. Okay, so there you go, Mr. Kennedy. Good Thank luck. you, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Good luck tonight. Okay, our next case, PLZBA 2022-0034, 32 Manning Avenue, a single family residential requests an area variance. The applicant, Robert Lanchock, proposes to construct a utility shed on his property. Jack McCann. Madam Chairwoman, I, uh, I have no choice but to recuse myself on this uh, PLZBA 2022-0034. Based on the fact that I've known both of these families for 50 years, they've lived right across the street from me. Okay. I don't think it would be... Uh, so we don't want them, to, them shoveling their snow on your property when no, uh, no, no, who no, 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 one no. gets either upset. Family, either family. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, I was going to say that. Um, because Jack needed to recuse himself and Mark isn't uh, here tonight, we only have three uh, members present, which means you have to get all three of our votes in order to have it approved. Um, if you want, you can wait until next month, and when I would assume Mark would be back, and then we go two to two, and refresh my memory with what a two to two does. Does either one of you recall? When you say two to two, you mean... Two well, yes, two no. There would have to be a three to one. So you'd have to be a three to one in order to... Um, so you could get one person to vote negatively and still get your... Um, Variance, but that would be up to you. I don't know if you want to wait or if you want to give it a shot with the three of us. I'll go tonight. Okay. Sounds like you're like on the Price is Right or something. You know what I mean? I'm making my decision. I'm going tonight. Okay. Go ahead. Introduce yourself and tell us what you want to do, please. My name is Robert Lanchuk. I live at 32 Men and Ave. It's my wife, Lori. Um, we are here seeking an area variance of 11 feet to put a prefabricated utility shed at the top of my driveway on top of your driveway i mean next to the house next to the house yes. in what is now your driveway you're going to put a shed right. part of your driveway yep. okay the top half the top half meaning closest to your backyard yes okay yep. all right now you probably know that we got um a correspondence from your neighbor well i found out tonight yes Pardon me? I found out when I got here, yes. Oh, and of course the name escapes me, but um, I don't know if anybody else has the name. The Bizio family. Bizio's, Mr. and Ms. Bizio, right. Now they were concerned about where their, I mean, I read it, but I didn't print it out, so I don't have it with me, but um, okay, if this is the property, where, where do the Bizio's live? Okay, and so where your car, Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, could you, you have to speak into the mic for, the, for those at home. Yeah, you can okay. take it with you. Okay. <laughs> so right here now is a fence. Um, so it's good. The carport's going to start there and it's going to come down to about 10 feet from the front of the house. The carport, I thought you were put in the uh, shed. That's where the carport was. We used that. We had a permitted carport there. When we got the driveway done, um, we got rid of the carport. Okay. So. Right here is the area we're going to put it. So the driveway is 18 feet wide. Okay. Um, the carport, uh, carport, the utility shed is 12 by 30, and we're going to keep it one foot off the house. 
on the side of the house. And so that's where the variance is. It it is not on the side of the property Co that those you live on. Correct. The, the variance is is actually the separation between a principal structure right. and, and an accessory. And so which is on there. Correct. And we actually spoke on the phone, and I was I was saying, you know, you can avoid this variance by simply attaching the structure. I wasn't aware it was prefabricated. Oh, okay. So it's going to arrive on and, and be installed yeah. uh, right there. So he, he he doesn't have the opportunity to connect that to his to his oh. structure. Right. So, okay. Right. But uh, correct. There's no um, there's no issue in terms of side setback. Here. Okay. Okay. Now wait a minute. Accessory structure. Oh, okay. All right. All right. It's just between the accessory structure and the principal structure is what the issue is. Not that it's too close to their property. Yes, ma'am. That's not the case at all. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, you know, nobody wants to see somebody's neighbor. I mean, I don't want to see somebody's neighbor being unhappy with what you're going to do if, in fact, what you're going to do is going to impact them in any way. But basically, it's not. Right. right? Other than the fact that they might not be happy with it, but. Well, if they had chosen to build an actual garage um, on the house. Well, excuse me, but is that a lot of. So that's uh, that's the photo that, that uh, that's, he was referring to earlier. The carport. That was your carport? That's from 2011, yeah. Yeah, but that was the carport. Yes, ma'am. And the house to the right is theirs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and so this isn't going to take up any more room than your carport. No, same It's time. just going to be closer to your house. Yeah. Got it, yeah, okay. It's going to be pushed back. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Got it. All right. So we know that Mr. and Mrs. Bizio, we had their um, their uh, letter. And do we have anybody else to speak? I shouldn't say anybody else. Do we have anybody to speak in favor of this proposal? Oh. Oh. And anybody, oh. Mr. Ms. Bizio, Mr. Bizio? Yes. You want to speak? Can you hear us? Yep, very clearly. Okay, great. Um, our concern is the size of the proposed ut utility shed. How far to the end of the driveway, which is on our side of the house, will that be? Okay, so you're talking about how far towards um, this, your house. Not Correct, yes. All right, let's take the questions and we'll have them answered at the end, right? Do you have any other questions? Um, we'll, we'll, I guess the, the basic question is, Will the utility shed be the five feet from where our property line ends? That's okay. required. Oh, more. Okay, so we'll take that when the utility shed to your property line is another question. And do you have any other questions? Do you have more questions? Basically, you just don't want it to impact your life. Right? Correct. Right. Um, okay, so we'll get those questions answered. Do we have any other questions? Nobody here in opposition or in favor? Okay, so then, Mr. Lamchak, which could you answer either both of those questions? How close to their house is is uh, your shed going to be? Any closer than your driveway is now? No, absolutely. No, not. it's no. not going to be any closer than. Driveway. Is, no, 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 not the driveway we're looking at. We have an extended, they extended their driveway, so it's only one foot from our property line right now. Yeah. Okay, you made your driveway wider. Driveway yeah, wider. right, okay, all right. The carport but it's within your property. Yeah, the carport's still going to be in the same area in regards shed. to the driveway. The shed. Yeah, the shed. I keep saying And carport. so it's going, it will be the five feet yeah. from your property line. Yeah. It'll be five feet from your property line. Okay. And those. Right. Okay. So the, all right. This isn't going to turn into a conversation though. So let's just say that the property line. Uh, the shed is going to be within five feet of your property line. No, it won't be with. Well, I mean, no. a, away from your property line. What? Is this question? Okay. Look at. I'm okay. expecting. Stop. What? Let's go. Yo, somebody in the background is giving them. Question. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. So the utility shed is going to be five from your property line. That answers that question. So it's not going to be any closer to your house. 
than the carport was. Even though they widened the driveway, they are not They're widening, the they are not taking the widened driveway for the whole use of the utility shed. All right, it's going to be the same width as the carport was. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the carport, right. Okay, so that answers those questions. Um, so do we have any further questions? Uh, do we have a CEQA? We do not need CEQA, it's a type two action. Okay, so then do we have a motion on this um, application, which is for an area variance? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'm gonna make a motion to approve the area variance taking into account um, everything that was included in the application and everything that was stated. Then looking at the, uh, the five factors that are to be balanced when reviewing an area of variance, I think that uh, on balance, the application merits approval. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, and on the motion, um, Katie McLaren? I vote yes to approve. Kathy Conroy, I vote yes to approve. And John Normile. Okay, so you have all three of our votes, so you can go ahead with utility shit. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Next case PLZBA special. Thirty Second Street, one hundred Second Street. Oh, this is one hundred Second Street. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's just okay. PLZBA twenty twenty two zero zero three zero. Would that might be you, sir? Seventeen hundred Second Street. No, we've been through this before. You you like you work here. I knew it. So therefore, oh, they're probably on. They could be zooming, right? Uh, yes, I'm here on the Zoom call. Okay, got it. 1702nd Street, a B2 community commercial district requires a special use permit and area variances to, prepare, uh, to convert a two family residential property to a three family property. So, Mr. Johnson, you're there. Could you introduce yourself and tell us what you want to do, please? Uh, yeah. So, um, what I have is um, I bought uh, a property. It's uh, 1700 2nd Street. Used to be prior, I believe, like the Elks or Moose Lodge there. Um, we had, had done quite a bit of renovation to the building. Um, with the building department, we were able to get two units there and then a storage unit that is off to the side at one time that was already built, you know, probably by the lodge. Um, so we've been using this for storage now for probably about six months. Um, and we're just looking at the space saying this could be another apartment here. Um, so now the building doesn't look like that anymore, but, <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so potentially, uh, off to the left where that brick structure is, uh, is where we would add the third unit, which is roughly a thousand square foot. Um, the building itself, I believe totals in like 4,700 square feet. Um, there's really, um, I would say no other commercial use for this particular property. Um, so that's why we've kind of gone to the way of just uh, converting this to another unit. Um, my partner and I have bought um, another building up the road that we intend to use for our office. That's been kind of a long time vacant structure. So we just don't have any commercial uses for that, that particular side anymore. I will say you did a beautiful job on this building. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're working hard. We're, we, we've been we've been uh, through Troy quite a bit here, and we yeah. actually um, recently acquired the Browns Printing uh, building. So we're hopeful that we can uh, put our offices, and we have plenty of storage now there. Oh, so good. we have really no no other use for this uh, this thousand square feet. So we we're hoping to occupy mm -hmm. it. Okay. So special use permit. Um, 
isn't the same as a use permit. So we don't have to go through those uh, tests. Oh, Katie has it all. Go ahead. Um, yeah, it's just similar to the area. Yeah, similar to the area variance. And the um, the other thing is the three parking spaces required um, and you not providing any. Uh, well, we would utilize the street because like ideally across the road, there's just a huge uh, abandoned like van uh, manufacturing thing, I assume. Like there's never been oh, right, a shortage right. for parking on this block. Like it's, it's basically this structure and a single family house, uh, I believe that's on the adjoining uh, I don't know if you want to say one block between fifth and sixth, but there really is no other um, structures on there at all, besides mine and, and this uh, other single family house that sits kind of on a, a large lot. And I believe this is going to be uh, um, that in the district where when the new zoning ordinance comes into effect, um, this will be required or this will be um, acceptable. I believe. Yes, I believe you're multi correct. unit. Yes. Okay, so, and that's going to be like in two months or something, isn't it? Uh, hopefully. Yes, hopefully. Uh, Steve would say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I would say I would say the first Thursday of July, but it won't. Uh oh, didn't know you were still listening, Steve. I'm glad I didn't say anything bad about you. Okay. <laughs> um. Yes. Okay. So I mean, I think that that's uh, something that we can take into consideration. Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this proposal? Anybody to speak in opposition? Okay, Do anybody from the board have any questions or comments you'd like to make? I like to see the red X's here. <laughs> right, red X is going away, we love that. Yeah, that is no more, That that's definitely gone. It's uh, occupied. Right. Um, you don't not, you see we don't not it, right. Um, so do we have a motion on the application? Okay, Katie's going to do it. Madam Chair, for PLZBA 2022-0030, um, I move to approve the special use permit based on the following findings of fact. Uh, the proposed project is not will not cause substantial injury to the value of the surrounding property values. Um, in fact, it will probably raise surrounding property values. Um, the app applicant um i is there screening and landscaping criteria for this that hasn't already been addressed through i'm just using looking at the findings of fact for the special use permit i i believe this is still on the vacant registry so this would likely have to go through planning okay um finally so they would they would address the landscaping buffers and things okay of that so can we although if you guys had any uh, stipulations uh, for the special use permit, you, you, you could certainly state those now. Okay. So could I say that uh, the applicant would agree to meet the landscaping and screening criteria that would be established by planning? And is that true, Mr. Johnson? Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I don't know what those requirements would be, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll certainly um, there if there's another step, any. what's that? There may well not be any when you get there. It's just yeah. Okay. No, if there's another step we have to take. We'll 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 certainly take whatever processes we have to do to uh, definitely continue our relationship with all these players. We don't want any. Um, okay. And the third one is that the special use permit um, is not expected to impair the public health, safety, convenience, aesthetic quality, or environmental surrounding neighborhood because um, it is being used as a residence. It is taking a vacant building um, and putting it to good use and will be um, a positive addition to the neighborhood. Okay, we have a, a second on the special use permit, John Normile, and on the um, application, Jack McCann. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, John Normile. I vote yes. Kathy Conroy, yes to approve. Katie McLaren. Yes to approve. Okay, so you have the special use permit. Now you're going to have to jump through the hoops for the area variance. We've well, already discussed. No problem. It, so, uh, I'm only kidding. Appreciate it. Um, 
who wants to do that one? Um, I'll do it, <laughs> Madam Chair. Uh, for PLZBA 2022-0030, um, I move to approve the two area variances, um, one for the maximum density and the other for the parking spaces. Um, move to the following findings of fact um, that an undesirable change will not be produced in the character of the neighborhood uh, nor a detriment to nearby properties will be created. Um, again, it's taking a vacant building, turning it into um, residence, um, beautifying the building, um, and therefore a, a, uh, an improvement to the character of the neighborhood. Um, the requested area variance, I don't believe to be substantial. Um, there looks to be plenty of parking um, and it's only three spaces that they need relief for. Um, and the maximum density is not as significant as it looks on paper because it's really going from two to three. Um, I don't believe the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact. Um, on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood for the same reasons um, I've given before. So that is a positive motion to approve. Okay, do we have a second? John, seconds, and on the motion, Jack McCann, uh, John Normile, Kathy Conroy, yes to approve, and Katie McLaren. Yes. Okay, so there you go, Mr. Johnson. Good luck to you. Thank you, have a good night. I'll set you too. Next case, PLZBA 2022-0036, 487 Campbell Avenue, B5 Highway Commercial, needs area variances. The applicant, Nick Vigione, is proposing a three-story mixed-use building with commercial on the first floor and apartments on the second and third floor, and for which he needs area variances. Mr. Vigione, are you present? Yes, how are you? Good and you? Thank you, good, thank you. Okay, so do you want to tell us what you want to do, please? Um, yep, yeah, I'll, um, I'll just bring you through real quick, kind of an overview of the project. Um, my name is Derek Ribulus, um, an architect at Cotler Architecture. Um, so Nick Regioni, the applicant's with me, and Leonardo DeConti uh, <laughs> with Cotler. I got all excited. So, um, let me just, uh, I guess I'll just give you a quick overview, sorry. Uh, can I share my screen? Can you show your what? Share the my screen. Oh, sure, if you, if you know how, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> okay, so I just brought up the site plan here. Uh, project's located at 487 Campbell Ave. Um, Mr. Riagioni had previously constructed um, on the site a uh, one-story Dunkin' Donuts building. So um, another part, phase two of the project was to be to develop the area to the right of the Dunkin' Donuts into um, a pad site, um, which has sat vacant for many years, um, trying to find um, basically suitors for this pad site. So um, he's come up with uh, this concept, this three-story mixed-use building, um, which would work for him uh, to make uh, the project feasible. Um, so we have this three-story mixed-use building. The first floor would be uh, commercial. The second story would be uh, apartments and the third story would be apartments. There'd be four units on each floor. They're all one bedrooms. So eight total one bedrooms. Um, we have already been to the planning board um, and taken into consideration a lot of their comments. Uh, the, the parking requirement for this project uh, would be 28 spaces per zoning code. Um, but the early feedback we got from the planning department was that uh, we needed more green space and less asphalt. So we um, addressed their comment and uh, reduced the amount of parking on the site. Um, and the site you can see here um, is pretty constrained. So we're here for one variance for the parking requirement to reduce it from 28 to 24. Uh, and then the other variance would be the height of the building because it's being three stories um, and making it um, commercially and also for the apartments uh, rentable and attractive for potential renters. Uh, we have to have a certain ceiling height in each, uh, each uh, different use. So um, our, our height um, is 45 feet to the mean roof slope. The zoning allows for 35 feet 
So we're looking for 10 feet of um, relief there. And just looking quickly at the building, you can see what it will look like. If I can zoom in, hold on one second. Uh, here we go. So here, oh, shoot, what was my zoom thing? Oh, here it is. So this is the design of the building. This would be the existing Dunkin' Donuts um, on the same site. So the first floor here would be the commercial level and then two stories above of residential. Um, and then the style, the architectural style we feel fits in nicely with the surrounding architecture. There's a lot of sloped roofs. Um, we're using, you know, clapboard siding and stone to accent the building, uh, which uh, fits in nicely with the surrounding buildings. And, um, and I can show you that in a second. I just want to change one thing here. Stop. Share. Okay, and then let me just show you quickly where we're talking about the Dunkin' Donuts. This is from Google, obviously. Dunkin' Donuts is already constructed here. The proposed three-story building would be built to the east of it here. Um, and looking at the architecture of the surrounding areas, there's a lot of sloped roofs, a lot of siding, a lot of you know brick. Um, there's some three-story buildings, um, right? Yeah, um, in close proximity to the gardens. to the project here. Um, this is three-story with brick and sloped roofs. There's another project up the road that uh, is a little newer. Park Place, which is three stories with, with stone and siding, um, cladding, along with sloped roofs. So we feel that the project fits in nicely with the surrounding architecture. Um, and then I guess I'll leave it at that. Okay. Do we have any questions for um, the applicant? John? Do you have any experience with with this sort of uh, mixed use in uh, in that setting, kind of out, outside of a, a main downtown setting? Can you can you point to any projects locally that we'd be familiar with? Um, I I mean I've uh, we've designed quite a few here in this office uh, on Route Two in Latham. Pure Plaza has commercial on the first floor and apartments on the second and third. Um, but in Troy, uh, I haven't done anything in Troy. Do you have anything that's similar? Uh, not, I have commercial right next, close to that site, but uh, well, yeah, you know, I converted the old, the, the right across the street from the site, uh, the car wash. I took that dilapidated building and we do have an apartment above it. So that's commercial, and that's only right across the street or in that Campbell Ave. This, this one right here? Yeah, right there. I have three st uh, stores, 6,000 square feet with a, an apartment above. Okay, do we have any other questions? Do you have okay. a commercial tenant in mind? Just curious, really. <laughs> you know, right now, uh, like I said, we have a couple bites on it, but we need to. I, I feel uh, we need to construct it. You know, it's kind of building. They they will come. So yeah. they, and, and I did a similar project over a late with no tenants, and I put up the building, and and you know, thankfully they came. Okay. I'm just thinking these the tenants in an apartment building like this. They've got Dunkin' Donuts. They've got DeMeo's liquor. They've got Cumbies. <laughs> they'll never need to leave. Life is good. Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody else have any questions? Is there anybody here from the public to speak in favor of this proposal? Anybody to speak in opposition? Okay, so we have, um, do we need a secret on this one? Uh, Madam Chair, for PLZBA 2022-0036, um, I'd ask the board to find this proposal to be an unlisted action with sufficient information available upon which to make a determination that the project is not expected to cause significant environmental impact. Do we have a second? John Normile seconds and on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
carried. Now, do we have a motion on the application for the area variances, building height and parking spaces? John? Uh, yes, um, Madam Chair, in regards to 2022-0036, make um uh, <clears throat> pardon me i'm going to make a motion that we approve the area variances um again uh this is based on what was submitted in the application and the information that's been presented tonight here at the meeting uh this is taking into account the, the balance of the five points under an area variance uh, there will be no undesirable change in the neighborhood, no, no detriment to the nearby properties. In fact, it, it, by bringing in uh, residents and new commercial tenants should increase foot traffic at the businesses. Uh, uh, the, the benefit mm -hmm. um, sought by the applicant in order to, to develop the lot um, this mixed use, you can't, there's, there's no other way to bring that kind of benefit. The, the requested variances are not substantial. They're being, they're putting up pro, our buildings on the property that are in keeping with the, uh, the surrounding buildings. And the variance will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood and in unbalance it does not appear that the alleged difficulty will solve okay do we have a second on the um motion jack mccann seconds on the motion katie mclaren i vote yes to approve uh jack mccann kathy conroy yes to approve and john normile okay good luck thank you very thank you. much thank you Thank you. Okay. Uh, next case, PLZBA 2022-0033, 3154 6th Avenue, an R4 urban neighborhood residential, medium to high density, A variance being um, requested. The applicant, QIMA LLC, is proposing to build a four unit multifamily on this vacant property. Um, is the applicant here? Yes, hi. Hi, okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Manuel. Thank you for reviewing the application. Is it possible for me to share my screen? Really? Great. Well, uh, let me know if you could see it or if there's any issue. Yeah, no, that looks nice. Oh, great, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, I am looking to build a four unit residential property on this lot. And to give a little bit of context, um, this lot is extremely small, much smaller than the surrounding neighborhood. And uh, from recent, from the research I've done, it's always existed. It's not a recent condition. It's always been this way in Troy. And currently, the Troy Community Land Bank owns this property, and I'm in contract to purchase it. And part of the agreement is for me to just ensure that I get the zoning requirements approved and then close on the contract. Um, in relation to the neighborhood uh, that I've noticed and in the past, there used to be a single family residence on this property. It was vacant for quite a long time. And that is why Detroit Community Land Bank ended up purchasing it and demolishing the existing structure. So right now the property is vacant. And I have a few photos of what it used to look like here. Uh, this was the existing property that used to be there for quite a number of years. And then currently over here on my right is the existing state. And just to give a sense of the surrounding properties, I have here just a collection of images um, here. What you'll see is the proposed property, the, the rendering that you saw beforehand, and then the adjacent properties over. And the area, the, the variances I'm seeking mostly apply to the density. Um, what I'm allowed to do currently right now is a single family I'm looking to do four units um, because of the size of the lot, which is only about 60 feet deep. Um, 
actually, I'm sorry. It, it's only about, let me just find the, the number here. Yeah, it's only about 25 feet deep by 60, 62 feet deep. Um, I'm only allowed to do one family, but I am able to build quite high, just like the other townhouses available. Um, and just to give you a sense, many of the majority properties around are two or three families, and some of them are six families, including the adjacent property next to me. Um, and then also here, in terms of um, front and side yards uh, variances, it's a very old neighborhood. A lot of the properties abut uh, their property line. So this image here, you see I have my property here circled. And then on the right, you can notice just uh, with these red markings, each one that I highlighted where the property goes right up until the sidewalk. So in terms of disrupting the neighborhood or changing the fabric, I, I think my property aligns pretty much with what, with what is exist, existing in the area and um, not necessarily disrupting any of the neighborhood. Um, and that is basically a summary of my proposal here. Okay, do we have anybody to speak in favor of this proposal? Anybody to speak in opposition? Do we have any questions of the applicant from the board? Um, I wondered, are these going to be like fair market value apartments? Are they luxury apartments? Are they, you know, no, so families or? Yeah, so all units will be two bedrooms. Um, and similar to the previous proposal, we are looking for young professionals who live and work in the area. And actually part of the agreement with Detroit Community Land Bank is to make these units um, not luxury high end uh, that are unaffordable to the area, but there is a um, an income cap to to these new units, um, so they are accessible uh, to the residents that live in the area. Okay, thank you, Chair. There is one item I'd like to um, clarify. <clears throat> uh, there are a number of variances sought for for area. Um, one of those being the side setback. So our code requires a side setback of 10 feet. That's to both property lines. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so when describing, when describing the relief as nine feet, um, that should be revised to be 18 feet. If you think about its relief of nine feet on both sides of the building. Even right. though it's on the corner? I was going to say it's on the corner, though, right? Well, yes, but Which we, we interpret to... we interpret the minor street as a side. As a side Property. Right, but nevertheless, you're not okay. sitting on top of a house next door. Co correct. That's yeah, correct. Right, yes. right. Was that the only one that, was it. that you wanted to speak to? Yep. Okay. Um, do we have any other further questions for the applicant? I mean, this is impressive to me. Um, Thank you. Nice use of the uh, an empty lot, I would say. Katie, did you have something you wanted to ask or say? I'm just, why not three? <laughs> yeah, uh, de definitely. For a lot of, you know, the area variances. Um, just out yeah. Of yeah, definitely. I could speak to that. Uh, we, we did look at financially. I, I'm doing this project uh, also with my partner, my wife, um, who, who's a financial guru of this. And the Three units we did look at um, in terms of the return on the project and just being able to maintain it. We do feel four is the best use of the property. Um, we are also still adhering to the height requirements. And since we could fit four and still accommodate, you know, nice units and that are desirable to the area, to the tenants that would hopefully live there, um, it provides us with enough income to really maintain the property and not just do. We, and that we are invested in this property and we don't want to just simply build and leave. We're really invested in hopefully the success and long-term longevity of this property. Thank you. Okay, do we have any further questions? No? Okay, then can we have a CEQA? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, for uh, PLZBA 2022-0033, um, 
I recommend the board find this proposal to be an unlisted action with sufficient information available upon which to make a determination that the project is not expected to cause significant environmental impact. Do we have a second? John seconds and on the motion all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Do we have a motion on the application? No, no, I don't. I, um, Madam Chair, I. I can unmute it. I can do it. Okay. You have to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. All right. I make a motion, a positive motion to grant. The area variances um, on the property located at 3154 6th Avenue. I feel that the uh, variances that are that are being uh, requested. Let me get my piece of paper here. Um, I don't believe an undesirable change in the neighborhood will take place. It's an empty lot. Anything that can be done to improve the um, appearance, I should say atmosphere, whatever of that neighborhood, I would think would be beneficial. Um, the benefits sought by the applicant in many of for many of these variances can't be achieved in any other way. The variances are not, for the most part, um, that substantial relief of two feet, four feet, even the 19 feet for the side setback, as I said, or 18 feet, I'm sorry. Um, and you're at the one side of the property is on the corner. So that uh, has to be taken into consideration. It's not exactly on top of a house next door. Um, there's zero parking spaces proposed, but once again, it's on a corner, it's on a main street and um, I believe that not having the eight parking spaces off, uh, off street will not be a significant uh, detriment to the property. Um, I also feel that, it, as I said earlier, the variance will not have an adverse effect impact, impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood. If anything, it will be an increase. And as the applicant explained, the other properties in the neighborhood, um, the uh, four feet height is not really, the, or I'm sorry, the four story height is also um, revisited in many of the other properties in the area. So with all of that in mind, I make a positive motion to approve. Do we have a second? John Normal seconds on the motion, Jack McCann. Katie McLaren? Um, I vote no. John Normile? I vote yes to approve. And Kathy Conroy, I vote yes to approve. So you have your variances. Good luck. Next case. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, PLZBA 2022-0018, 411 9th Street, two family residential neighborhood area variance. The applicant, Sheena Sager, is proposing to construct an attached carport and deck. I might also say, Sheena, that I think the uh, tense of the verb is wrong in that it's already up. Yes, it, yes, it is. Okay. So do you want to uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you wanted to do before you did it? Um, yes, yeah, so I um, consulted a local contractor. It was at the height of COVID. And excuse me, um, could you just introduce yourself for the record? Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. My name is Shana Sager. I'm the owner of a duplex on a um, couple of duplexes on 9th Street. And this is for 411 9th. I live in the building. Okay, and so go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you. What is it you wanted to do? Um, so when I met with the contractor, um, there had been a previous existing carport that was taken down at 
the beginning of 2019. And that was a um, dilapidated structure and it was built on, on four by fours rather than, uh, it just wasn't sturdy and, it, and they took it down before I purchased it. And so I met with the contractor because I did want a carport, um, but I wanted one that was big enough to like um, drive a big truck under or like a mini camper for when I take road trips. So I met with him, he designed it, um, told me that because of COVID that the, he couldn't pull permits right now, but not to worry about it. And, um, you know, at the end of the job, <laughs> um, I talked to my dad and, and he basically said, yeah, you, you, you need to see if you can fill out something online. So I did. And that is when um, I got in touch with code enforcement and they said, you know, you need site plans. Um, I can show you the, the document that I have that shows the, there it is, the previous carport. Um, and so they said I needed site plans and I got that done. Um, the actual footers of um, the new footers of the deck are um, like six inches closer to the, the fence area than it was before but the overhang is actually where that additional foot is. Um, so both of these were built um, quite, quite close to the fence. And uh, literally it's only six inches more uh, because the footers, newer footers have to be dug deeper. And there was too much rock, the contractor said and that it wouldn't be an issue because it's also considered a second story deck. Um, so I've gone through everything with a trip to try to come into compliance. And my neighbors um, think the current carport looks great and that it's well built. They, they have no complaints. Um, and I'm actually speaking with the owner of 407 to purchase that building as well. Um, so I, I understand I did not do my due diligence. I have, I have no reason, really, I do have an excuse. I was going through a difficult health condition at the time, as well as trying to do this. I just wanted an outdoor space where I could be safe without being at risk of COVID, maybe later down the line, turn it into a deck. Um, but there you have it. That's I've I've really got no good justification. Um, I did not do my due diligence um, in this case. Well, we can always blame it on COVID. You know what I mean? <laughs> people not doing what they should have done. And sir, I mean, for all of your uh, mea culpas, if we we're asking for uh, four feet uh, relief for four feet, I don't think personally that you know and you're not trying to make up a story as to why you didn't do it so that's always appreciated when somebody's being honest do we have yeah. anybody speak in favor of this proposal anybody to speak in opposition do we have any questions from the board I, I do have photos of the com of the completed deck if you want me to show you that yeah um, versus what, um, what is there now? It does. Yeah, it looks really nice. Oh, you, you have a picture of the new one. Well, I drove by. Oh, okay. <laughs> we do um, have diligence here too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so no, much. It, it, it really, it looks nice. And, um, you know, let's just not be foolish about I, I, will, I will say code enforcement is inspected today. Few minor comments. Oh, so good. There's no issues as far as that's concerned. Okay. Well, I would hope not if she got a real contract to do the work. I would hope he did it. He but you know never he, know with he contractors. Didn't know he did permit, so. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> no, he probably blamed it on COVID, too. He, he did. Katie, did you want to say? Yeah, exactly. No, I was just asking that this goes, if we were to grant this, it would go with the property. So if something were to happen and needed to be replaced, they could 
dig in the same place, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, do we have anything further to discuss or are we ready for a motion? Do we have a secret? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, so that being the case, do we have a motion on the application? Uh, Madam Chair, for uh, PLZBA 2022-0018, um, I would make a, a move to approve the area variance uh, for the side setback. Um, I do not believe an undesirable change has been produced in the character of the neighborhood. Um, in fact, it looks like quite a nice addition to the neighborhood. Um, again, the benefit sought by the applicant can't be achieved by uh, a different method because at this point it's already done. Um, I don't believe it's, it's a substantial variance. Um, and again, I don't believe it's gonna have any adverse effect or impact um, on the neighborhood. Okay, we have a second. All right, Jack McCann. And on the motion, Jack McCann. John Normile. Yes to approve. Um, Kathy Conroy, I vote yes to approve. And I will also say um, that I would have voted yes to approve if you hadn't already put it up. I mean, I, you know, that's, it. I don't think we were voting because it's already there, is my point. True, and I didn't mean to. Katie. No, 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 you didn't. Um, I vote yes to approve. Okay, so we have four yeses, zero noes. You have your approval. Good Thank luck. you so much. I appreciate well, your well. time. Good night. Good night. Last case, PLZBA 2022-0039, 37th Street, B4 Central Commercial District, uh, area variance is required. The applicant, Russell Brooks, is proposing to construct a carriage house on his property. The minimum side and rear accessory setback required is five feet, zero feet proposed. The applicant here, oh, where'd you come from? I've been sitting back there this whole time. Stop it, you've been there the whole time? Oh my gosh, okay, go ahead. I will say we got a nice uh, email from your neighbors um, offering their support of your project, saying really nice things about you too. Um, do we have anybody here other than the neighbors who are not but sent their email to speak in favor of this proposal? Anybody to speak in opposition? Okay. Um, do we have any questions or comments from the board? John? Aaron, is there a, a difference in definition of carriage house instead of garage? I do not believe our code distinguishes between those, those two items. In fact, I don't think we define a carriage house in our code. Okay. We do define garage. We do define um, accessory dwelling units of uh, things of that nature, but we don't define a carriage house. Okay. So by calling this a carriage house. It, it, it's showing that you're living in downtown Troy as opposed to Lansing. It, it should essentially be considered an <laughs> Am accessory I right? structure that, that, right, that has a residence, could potentially have a residence on the second floor. I don't know if that's the proposal now, but it, it could. Okay. I guess that's where I was going. If, if 
if there was a, a plan to put a, a residence inside the building anywhere, that would be another application. The creation of a dwelling unit would mm -hmm. require, yes, um, and likely uh, that would, uh, without having looked at that specific case, it would likely require uh, a density variance or some of the variances that we've seen this evening. Okay. Certainly a variance for parking spaces, things of that nature. Thank you. I just wanted to get that out. Yeah. It is, is yeah. that's not your intention yeah. though, right? It's strictly uh, for. Hang on, I can't hear the guy. Jack, I can't hear. I can't hear the guy because he's not speaking. Right. Okay. In which case, we consider okay. it like a like like the shed at uh, at thirty two yeah. Manning, right? Right. Um, he may store his vehicle in there. He may store his lawnmower, but it's but if he stores his mother in law in there, then we got a problem, right? <laughs> He's probably got a bigger one. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's the way I think of I mean, you know, I assumed, you know, you were going to use it as a garage as a garage. You know, yeah. Okay, do we have any um John and Jack, do you have any other questions? For the applicant? No. Katie? I don't, and there's no secret needed on this. It's a type right. Of okay, so do we have a motion on the application itself? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a positive motion to grant the variance, please. Okay. Um, 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 making the motion, taking into consideration everything that was included in the application and what's been presented here tonight and discussed at the meeting, um, applying the, uh, the criteria for an area variance, I believe that the, uh, the project passes the balancing test for the request of variance. Okay, do we have a second? second. Jack McCann seconds on the motion, Jack McCann. Katie McLaren? Yes to approve. Kathy Conroy, yes to approve. John Normile. I vote yes to approve. Okay. Good luck. You're all set. Okay. Uh, Chair, before we, we move to the close of the meeting. Yes. Um the uh, the gentleman that had property at 162 9th Street just sent over the oh. letters that are being placed in front of you now. Oh wow. Uh, this is wow. letter from his, his funding agency describing the um, the issue with the the three family yep. needing to needing to have that in um, uh, in, in essentially mm -hmm. confirmed or in writing. And um, is this sufficient for what? I that's mean, your call. Okay. Okay. So I'm now we got to take a second counsel. to read it, right? Yeah. That's our call. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We talked about how. Uh, we'll. Uh, for those in attendance, we will make this part of the, the record okay. as well. This will go in the meeting minutes. This was 31. Okay. Okay. So, so we either have to, um, wait a minute, let's just step back to that one. All right, so this basically affects the um, first criteria for a use variance. Does it not financial part of it? He can't get that's right, the that's sticking right. point, so to speak. That's the reason that it was tabled. So based on the information that was provided to this applicant, we obtained this letter, notified Aaron if the board wishes to recall that case, they can tonight. <laughs> Right, that's what we want to do. But and and this letter references 
2A. We, and it's, but we have the supplies that are not the competent. Correct, but, but we're only looking at A, is my point. Well, we kind of discussed it. Because we discussed the others. That's what I mean. Yeah, this letter, this letter references A, is my point. That's what it would go to. Yes, right. So do we need, does everybody read it, the letter? And um, how do we feel about it? Do we have to reopen the case, number one? Right, in, in reference to PLZBA 2022-0031, property at 162 Ninth Street. The, this case was um, tabled earlier this evening and we're now reopening it, or do we have to vote to reopen? We can reopen it. Okay, we're now reopening the case because um, the applicant did receive evidence from supporting evidence, I should say, from his um, funding corporation as to the financial uh, ramifications, shall we say, of um, whether or not we want to, what we needed to know from a financial perspective is for whether or not we wanted to grant the uh, use variance. Um, do the members of the board feel they've had enough time to look at the letter and do they do we feel that the letter uh, does in fact speak to the financial aspects of the variance and it's sufficient? I believe it does. And you believe it's sufficient? Okay, so with that being the case for the use variance, we, we have to move on then to speak to a use variance, a whole mm -hmm. use variance. Well, we have to vote separately on the two area. Oh, that's the area, right? The area. Yeah. We, oh, we, we also have to vote. I mean, that is the use first, right? We also did not take an action on secret. Right. Yep. All right. So okay, so let's do the secret. Okay. So, Madam Chair, in PLZBA 2022-0031, um, I'd ask the board to find this proposal to be an unlisted action with sufficient information available upon which to make a determination that the project is not expected to cause significant environmental impact. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, John Normal seconds and on the CEPRA, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Now, do we have a motion on the application itself or the use variance? Uh, Madam Chair, for PLZBA 2022-0031, um, I move to approve the use variance uh, based on the following findings of fact. Um, I do not believe, especially um, in light of the new uh, financial information that we received, that the applicant um, is not able to obtain a reasonable return with an allowed use. Um, there was a unique hardship to the property um, here in that it was um, sold as a three unit, um, but um, only had um, what would I call it? Only had uh, a variance, I guess, for, for two units. Um, this variance would not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. I think it would just have the opposite effect. Um, and also this hardship was not self-created, um, again, because it was sold to the applicant as a three unit um, building. Okay, we have a second on that motion. John Normile seconds on the motion. Jack McCann. Yes, Katie McLaren. Yes, to approve. Kathy Conroy. Yes, to approve. John Normile. Yes, to approve. Okay, so you have the use variance. You're halfway there. Now for the area variance. Uh, Madam Chair, for PLZBA 2022-0031, I move that we approve uh, the area variance for the maximum density and for the parking relief. Um, again, an undesirable change to the neighborhood or uh, nor a detriment to uh, nearby properties are gonna be created by these variances. Um, in fact, you know, I think it's going to be a nice, especially with an owner occupied um, 
residents, um, it will be a, a nice addition to the neighborhood. Um, we've already established that the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by another physical, uh, feasible means. Um, I don't believe the area variances are substantial. We're talking about three parking spaces and one dwelling unit. Um, and again, they will not have any um, adverse impact on the neighborhood or the environmental conditions in the neighborhood. Okay, do we have a second on that one? John, Normile, and on the motion, Jack McCann. Um, John Normile. I vote yes to approve. Kathy Conroy, I vote yes to approve, and Katie McLaren. Yes to approve. Okay, so there you go, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Have a good night. Might want to take your um, uh, yeah, yeah, homestead yeah. funding guy out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Good luck. Do we have a motion, motion to, to adjourn. Um, adjourn? Yes. Katie and John. Okay. All in favor, aye. aye. Thank you. Time to go. I think too. Well, it would have been if we had a table. So, so, so.